opportunity last week to share a little bit of our story, our journey as Greater Life, and there's a unique part of it that we share in common. We had, Kelly and I planted uh, Mint Hill Community Church in 2012, started in a school, went to another school, went to a storefront, a lot of setting up, a lot of tearing down, a lot of borrowing, begging, and stealing. No. No. Um, borrowing <laughs> only. And uh, we, we had a, a journey there where, um, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you or any uh, of you as well, at the five-year mark, I found myself in a place uh, where, what am I doing? Uh, I got a little bored in a sense of, Lord, there's got to be something next, and I didn't feel and didn't know what that might be. And so I endeavored to find what that was on my own, and uh, the first place I looked is, I, 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 I love politics, I'm a political junkie, so I, I called in and said, hey, you know, what does it take to be a state senator? And they're like, yeah, this would be amazing. And, and so it kind of started having that conversation. I was like, well, that'd be fun. Uh, and this was in uh, 2017. And uh, then I went back towards the military route, spent some time in the Marine Corps, and I thought, you know, I could do the chaplaincy uh, in the Navy. I, I heard there was a bonus involved. So uh, in my humility, I called them. And uh, they said, you know, you, you missed a cutoff by two weeks. I was too old. And God closed that door. And then shortly after that, my youth pastor, who was pastoring the church on the other side of town, Gar, uh, which it's my understanding was the first Pentecostal, Pentecostal work in Charlotte That's amazing. in 1930, he called me, and he was in the process of going through a cell of the building to Rick Hendrick. And we had just had a meeting, and Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, but it might have even been a couple of Sundays before that where we had a vision meeting, and it was called Dream Big. And, and I, I frankly put out a lot of vision to that little congregation that I might have not even believed myself. <laughs> believe God for a building, believe God for this and that, and it's Dream Big. And, uh, and Kelly told me after that meeting, I believe God's just going to give us a building. And I, okay, <laughs> whatever you say, darling. Um, through the process of the conversation with Gar, that's in essence what we talked about last week, is they handed us the keys to the building that had already been sold for millions of dollars. And now our church, and of course uh, Kelly and I as the leaders of that church, had this incredible gift mm. that we looked at as that and do today, that God help us to be good stewards of that gift, because if you trusted us with us, you must know us better than we know ourselves. And I understand you just got a gift. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, it was just a few weeks ago. I need to have Deborah tell this story probably sometimes better than I could and get her side of it. Um, Jim and Deborah, wave your hands so everybody knows who you are. I encourage you guys to get to know them because they're amazing, amazing people. I was driving by um, what was Calvary Praise and Worship Center on Highway 2427, you've probably all seen the church and its sign, um, probably 15 minutes from here, 20 minutes from here, on Albemarle Road, and the Spirit of God spoke up in my spirit and said, find out what's happening in that church. So the next day, I, I called my elders, and I said, here's, I don't, I don't know what this means, but the Lord said, we need to find out what's happening in that church. They said, Pastor, yesterday, same time, God spoke to us that we're supposed to go into the parking lot of that church, and we're supposed to pray over that church. So I mean, you know, that right there is enough to say, okay, something is going on here. And we didn't exactly know what it was, and we even discussed it. I said, now, I'm going to send you in like spies in the camp on Sunday. I'm sending you in to find out what's going on in that church. But don't, don't, think, out, don't think outside of any box or inside of any box. It could be that the Lord is saying we need to help them in some way, shape, or form. Whatever that may be, we need to be a blessing to them. I don't know what this means, find out what's happening in that church. So I I sent them to the church, and, and their wonderful pastor had been there for how many years, Dr. Deborah? 27 years. That church has been there much longer than that. Uh, 27 years, uh, just has had some medical issues and has had to um, step down. And they were basically praying, Lord, what do we do? As they're holding this thing up, they're like, Lord, what, what do we do? 
And it's almost as if they knew immediately. I mean, I don't want to, and there's Carrie as well. I didn't see you here, Carrie. So good to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to Deborah and Carrie because they were, they were there. Summer and, and Neil were there as well. You guys, all y'all raise your hands. Raise your hands right there. So mm-hmm. they, were, they were there that Sunday, I think, when Steve, when our elders came in uh, to that church property. And I don't know if y'all knew immediately what the Lord was doing when they called me back to let me know what the situation was. I said, well, let's not jump to any conclusions. Maybe we're just supposed to help those pastors or whatever the case may be. It seemed like a week or two weeks. I don't know. It was just crazy fast that the entire board got together of that church and voted unanimously to hand the church and its property over 18 acres on Highway 2427 over to Encounter Ministries to steward that great work and to continue the legacy Mm -hmm. that they had built. And I think we need to praise God for some people who can hear the Holy Ghost. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. So now... So we get the 18 acres on 2427, and now we're in the middle of this renovation, renovating this amazing and beautiful church. And, and we were just there before we came here today. The lights just went in. We, there have been lights dangling from the ceiling uh, for a month, and it's really dark in there. And we've got kind of random construction lights or whatever in the building. And now we've actually got some lights in the room. So it's, it's exciting watching it all come it. together. And then to walk in here and see that that's where you came from. Yeah. Yeah. A start like that, it's truly inspiring, as Greater Life is. It's inspiring to all of you, but you need to know for ministries like ours, uh, and I've been, in, I've, been in, I've been pastoring for 20 years, I've been in full-time ministry for 25 years, this ministry is an inspiration. It really yeah. is. Amen. Well, I, I love the kingdom mentality, as you said, of Jim and, and his ministry, and Randy, who was uh, my youth pastor and then the pastor of Gar and and friends there are churches and this could be a prayer for us in perpetuity mm. there are churches dying on the vine yeah with honestly grave circumstances because there are buildings that are sitting empty that can God God can use for great and mighty things mm. and so I'm thankful for leaders that are prayerfully considering and looking for the next generation, the next ministry, because they're out there. And we just need to be aware of what God can, God can do what we cannot see around corners. Mm. And uh, I, I think while you were talking about you sent spies in the camp, I, I remember some of your members sitting in, in that area over oh, yeah. there we sent spies quite over a few here Sundays here at Greater Life Church. <laughs> and I'm thinking now, what were they up to? But anyway, we won't get in. <laughs> we won't get into Actually, any of this. Just, I just had a meeting with some of our staff. I said, find out what their order of service is like. Find out what events that they do. We want to pattern everything that we can after greater life. We want to give it to you, man, because it's a kingdom thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's going to be awesome. Everything we have, we stole from somebody else. Right. You know, the scripture says there's nothing new under the sun, and the scripture's always right. My son always says, good artist copy. Great artist steal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> One of my mentors would, would do that with quotes. He'd say, the first time I'll reference you directly. The second time I'll say someone said. The third time it's mine. It's mine. That's right. And can I also say, the stand that you took in 2020 was an inspiration to the body of Christ in this region. Not only that you took the stand, but the slings and the arrows that came with it and the attacks that came with it. And you stood strong through it all. You were an example to all of us. Amen. And we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight with the first question. What are aliens? Now, why are you asking me that question? <laughs> One of the first things we talked about at I lunch. Know. It's like, hey, man, do you think aliens are this? And we both were like, yes, that's what we both think they were. But I want you to answer it because you're probably way more eloquent. How much time do we have here tonight? <laughs> I mean, what's the, uh, what's, the, what's the cutoff time? And this is, I think this is such a timely message. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the news, but it, is, it certainly has been in the news the last five years, but particularly the last uh, few weeks, it has actually been back in the news. Of course, how many of you remember 2020? What a tumultuous year that in the middle of 2020, they announced that yes, uh, there are UAPs. Yes, we have been studying it, and nobody cares because just all hell was breaking loose right. in so many different areas. But uh, in the last two weeks, Louis Elizondo, who was the former director of the UAP task force for the Department of Defense, and how many of you know there's been congressional hearings over the last few years 
dealing with UFOs, UAPs, uh, uh, entities of non-human origin. Mm -hmm. these, these are congressional hearings. So I never wanted to be the alien guy, right. but I found that as, as this stuff, stuff started coming out, the church was running into these conspiracy theories, and I don't know if you guys know this, but when you start to go down the rabbit hole, there is something addicting about conspiracy theories. <laughs> and if you keep going down the rabbit hole, it does something to you. Right. Something breaks in the minds of people who do not have a connection with the kingdom. And I think this is so important that if there's a lot of conspiracies, not just theories, there are actual conspiracies going on, right? I mean, what is a conspiracy theory? Just wait, wait six, six months, months and, and it becomes true. an actual fact. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of crazy things going on, and as people's eyes open up to this, there's a chaos that enters into their mind that if they're not kingdom connected, they'll never recover from. There's a, there's a fear that is released, a distrust that is released, and so I saw pastors and church leaders buying into all kinds of unscriptural, ungodly things, and I said, okay, I've got to dig into this. I wrote a book called Summoning the Demon, AI, Aliens, and the Antichrist, yeah. I didn't bring any with me. I brought my copy. Which one you got? In case I needed to reference it here there you go. tonight. <laughs> um, and the purpose of it was to bring people back to the Word. Because, yes, these things are true. Yes, these things are happening. But what does the Word have to say about these things? So when we ask the question, what are aliens? Well, you notice recently that they have changed their language, mm -hmm. that they're no longer saying extraterrestrial because there's no evidence that any of these entities or craft are coming from outside of our planet. They're saying non-human or interdimensional is what they're saying. And the moment they said that, they've now crossed over into our territory. Right, spiritual. The moment that they say non-human or interdimensional, now we're dealing with biblical terms. How many of you know the Bible talks about entities that are not human, that are in this earth, that are causing things to happen, that Satan himself is called the, the God, yeah. the lowercase yeah. g, yeah. of this world. Right. And that there are demonic entities uh, that are working in this earth. And we can talk more about the relationship between demons and alien, alien encounters and, and demon possession. But the last week or so, Louis Elizondo, who was, who was over the, the UAP task force with the Department of Defense, he's releasing a book called Imminent. Everybody say imminent. Imminent. That word has been heavy on my spirit for some right. time right now right. because I think the return of Jesus is imminent. Imminent. Amen. That doesn't mean soon. It means at any moment. Any moment. So it could be soon, it may not be soon, but there's this feeling that it is imminent. I'd like to go over some end time stats with you in a moment if we possibly sure. could. But he released this book and now he's, he's going all over the place talking about the things that he discovered when he was working with this task force and how this is a national security issue. So the Church of Jesus Christ can no longer just slough this off as if it is a fringe issue left only to podcasters who are in that circle. We have to realize that this subject matter, and I haven't even answered your question yet. I'm, is, that, is this okay? <laughs> You're good. That this subject matter is so important, it is shifting our culture. Right. In more ways, and it has actually for the last century, it has shifted our culture. From Mormonism, which is an alien religion. Right. You know, Mormons believe that the father is an alien who lives on a planet called Kolob. Right. And that someday, if you will follow the teachings of Joseph Smith, you can have your own planet. So did you know that there are people who believe that, who are in Congress and who are in the Senate, mm -hmm. who have run for president? Mm -hmm. So is that affecting culture? You better believe it. Islam, they worship around the Kaaba, which is a place that has a black rock that they believe fell from the sky, being extraterrestrial. Scientology, Tom Cruise, anybody, <laughs> who, is, who is known for saving Hollywood over the last few years with his latest Top Gun movie. I had uh, was reading today about L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, and his buddies, a guy named Parsons and Aleister Crowley, who was yes. the founder of Satanism. They used to hang out in the desert doing magic ceremonies. And one of their most popular ceremonies, known ceremonies, is one that they had that in an area what is now called Area 51. Mm. And that started before the phenomena around Area 51, but after their ceremony, the phenomena began, and so they it literally summoned the, the demon, this mm. non-human entity, and then you have this, this particle accelerator yeah. where they're trying to find the God particle, that there's all kinds of information coming out of this, and every time they turn it on, things get a little wonky for a while. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and when I read about they're getting ready to turn it on again. And, and if you want to really go down a rabbit hole, but you've got to be kingdom minded. Yeah. Check out the ceremony of them opening up that particle accelerator, the Hedron Collider. Collider. And uh, it's full of demonic imagery. Um, and, and I think I'm convinced, and I was talking about this a couple of Sundays ago, that the rapture, the imminent return of Christ, uh, that this, all of this is leading towards the deception. Mm. Because I'm convinced, because Hollywood likes to set the stage, but we know that it's orchestrated and it's demonic, and, and, and we've seen movies that have this thing that happens where millions of people disappear. Could be a mist. It could be a they weren't evolved enough as others, and so now this trend has begun to be introduced. Um, last week, I was watching some news clips, and it was a video that side by side news clips where they're all saying the same thing. It's a script. How many of you have seen that? It's crazy, and it's it's coming more and more uh, common. And so I'm picturing the church is taken. We ain't got to worry about it. But the script is released, and now it's, we're evolving into the next thing as a race, and now these non-human entities, uh, oh, this is scientifically proven, because really they still say evolution is scientifically proven with no evidence. Proof, yeah. And I, so I, I feel that the lie is being created. It could have happened in the 70s, but... We stand here on the other side of the government, which we're supposed to trust, saying, yeah, this is real. Yeah, the moment you begin to realize what the government has done in the past, you realize there's no limits to what it is capable of doing right now in the present, which is why it's so dangerous, because your mind can go then in a million different directions, right. unfounded in the word, and feel hopeless. So conspiracy theories are a great way to become a victim. There's some power bigger than me that I can't access that's controlling things. It's, it's a really convenient way for conservatives to become victims sure. when they're the ones who are attacking victim mentality. And so when, when you talk about this, it's, it's so – I don't know how many of you have seen that where the different – you need to YouTube and search newscasters saying the same thing. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know, a hundred, hundred different newscast channels, not just national broadcasts but local from all across the country, all repeating the exact same script. And it's chilling. Right. It's chilling when you watch it. Actually, it originated with Project Mockingbird, Mockingbird, when the intelligence agencies colluded with uh, the media to get their message out to program the populace. Yeah. And so all these things are true, which is why, why it's so easy for us to go into that mindset. But I want to remind you, the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, that verse right there that we all know and love, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world, it's actually an end-time passage about the Antichrist spirit. It's right. referring specifically to that spirit, and it says greater is he that is in you than the Antichrist spirit that is in the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So if the Amen. Antichrist spirit is trying to collude and dominate the media and it's trying to do all these things, when sin does abound, grace does much more abound. Amen. We have the power to take media and to get messaging out and to do things. If they've got lying signs and wonders, we have real signs and wonders to advance the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ. So, Amen. so yeah, so we could, we could keep going along that right. line. I mean, uh, Scientology people like, that's an alien religion. They believe in, the, he, L. Ron Hubbard eventually got down to this alien entity who right. controls everything and, uh, from space. Uh, but you know what the number one alien religion on the planet is? Atheism. Wow. Richard Dawkins, the author of The God Delusion, he said he thinks it's ridiculous to believe that God created life on the earth, but he thinks it's very possible that aliens <laughs> seeded life on this planet. Now, wow. that's what's being taught in your universities. That's what's more likely to be believed. So, and, and we're entering into a time where the technology is available to mimic these things. Now, we'll talk, we may, we may get deeper into this because people always ask the question, well, aliens, is it, is it really um, supernatural paranormal beings right. or is it fabricated hoaxes or is it the government trying to control us? Are they making this up? Are they really trying to fight it? And the answer to the question is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is all of those things. So we need the mind of Christ when we approach yes. these things. What encourages me more than anything, no matter what I see on the news, no matter what I see happening, is the words of Jesus. It says, when you see these things, look up. Yeah. 
because my return is near. And as the believer, we've got to run our lives and live our lives in a place of incredible peace that passes understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. No matter what the world's saying, they're looking around for who's calm in the room. Hmm. It's got to be us. Yeah. Certainly, we want to speak the truth. But we also have to speak the truth from a place of we know yeah. Jesus is coming and we're going to be okay. Um, you need to be on our side of the line when that happens. I think um, the, the concept of Hollywood, I'm going to throw this one at you. You've seen the Avengers movies? Oh, yeah. I'm praying for you. <laughs> the Avengers movies, think of the last one, the big one, the big battle, right? They're all together in a field or in an open space in a very large battlefield. They're coming from all over, and then the, the people from this tribe and nation and the, the superheroes and this and that, and everybody's coming together to fight an alien god. If you look at it from a different lens, that looks like Armageddon. It looks like what the Antichrist might say. Meet me on the battle lines of Megiddo, the field, so we can fight against the alien God, which is Jesus Christ is what they would be referring to. I mean, I'm, I'm picturing this thing being played out, and it's not too far-fetched. Mm -mm. We just watched a movie with it, and we all clapped when Captain America picked up his shield. And, and so, which brings me to um, another question I'd love your opinion on. What about the United States in the end times? What's Bible their role? Question. This is one of the most common questions we get on our program, is America in Bible prophecy? Now, when you look through Bible prophecy, you can clearly see Iran, you can see uh, Russia, you can see Egypt, you can see a variety of different nations. America is not specifically mentioned in Bible, not directly mentioned, I should say, in Bible prophecy. Now, that is a fact. Now, when I've said that in the past, people will write in and say, yeah, but if you look at Jerusalem, in that word, it has USA in Jerusalem. <laughs> So, America is not directly mentioned in Bible prophecy. They missed their chance. Yeah. That's, USA. That's, USA. Don't do it. I'm just saying you missed your chance. Go ahead. But I believe that is a prophecy. Mm -hmm. The absence of a direct reference to the United States of America in Bible prophecy is a prophecy that predicts that America will no longer be a significant player on the world stage at the time of the rise of the Antichrist and his kingdom. One could make the argument that is, it is required that America not be a major player in order for a world government to arise True. like that. So the question is, how would that happen? Well, you could see an economic collapse. You could see some sort of war. You could see an EMP, strategically placed EMPs in the United States. A variety of things can happen. One of the most significant things that could happen that could remove America from the world stage is the rapture of the church. That's what I believe, yeah. The moment Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized believers are taken from this planet, what nation do you think is going to be most impacted by that? Right. You think it's going to be Pakistan where 0.9% of the population is Christian or 3% of the population, they're barely even going to notice that there was a rapture. In yeah. Europe where Christianity is declining and around 7%, claim to be Christian, that what, what's going to happen there? But in America, in America, where you have a large swath of the population, I know you feel like a minority. You are not a minority. We are the largest yes. special interest group in this country. Yes. If we ever came together, we would be the yes. most powerful yes. group in this country, culturally, politically, in every, in every way imaginable. What's going to happen when we are gone? Well, America will be in disarray. Uh, what percentage of airline pilots are born-again believers? What percentage of the people running the, our nuclear plants or working with the DOT, the Department of Transportation, or in the military that has a strong, strong group of spirit-filled believers in the military, people who love the Lord Jesus Christ? What's going to happen when all of a sudden right. they're gone? That's right. Uh, so it makes sense to me that America is not a strong player in end-time Bible prophecy. Now, that can happen overnight. So that means that doesn't mean we stick our head in the sand this is what I'm very concerned about. I'm concerned about Christians who put their head in the sand or in the clouds and say, just take me out of here, Lord, just get me out of here. That is not a biblical response or attitude. We are called to occupy until he comes. Yeah. And I get so many people who say, well, you know, we know what the book of Revelation says, right. and so why do we even bother? Well, my response to them is, do you know that you're going to die if the Lord tarries his coming? 
Mm. Well, yes. Well, are you going to try to eat right and exercise anyway? <laughs> well, why? If you know what's ultimately going to happen, if you know you're eventually, if the Lord tarries, that you're going to die, why would you eat right and try to, try to eat healthy or exercise? Because as long as you're here, you want to be as effective as you can right. for as long as you can to advance the kingdom of God. And so even though we know what's coming, we need to do as much as we can to be as effective as we can to advance the kingdom in the last days. You know, I was, I was brought up with this mentality that there was this great revival that was going to happen right before the rapture of the church. But according to what I can see in Scripture, is that's, that's not the case. The revival that happens happens after the rapture. of the, It is God's last efforts to try to wake people up even during the Great Tribulation. But, but my understanding is, is not the revival, but a great apathy and a great falling away. And so I live in this tension because it certainly looks like there's a great falling away. It certainly feels like there's a great apathy in many churches, even with uh, the what I would consider the demise and the fall of Methodism, the holiness denomination that, in essence, birthed our Pentecostal movement uh, from that holiness uh, in the early 19, eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. But we find them abandoning the truth of Scripture mm -hmm. and an apathy that goes with that. Another sign of the end is that there is hate among the brethren, that there is such a divisive spirit uh, within the church, and certainly you could recognize that. So where I stand is this. Lord, if I'm still here, then that means you're going to give me one more try. Because it is the heart of God that all would be saved. And it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that drives us to believe for another revival, another move, another fire within our nation, within our bones, within our churches. Because if it is the heart of God that all would be saved, and if Jesus has not returned, which he has not, then there must be time for another movement of his, of his goodness in his hand. Mm. But when we look around the imminent return of Christ, nothing has to happen right. for him to return. Correct. And for generations, there was a sense that, well, this has to be, technology has to be at this level in order for that to happen. And with every generation, it gets even better, which brings me to the mark of the beast. Can I take the first part on this one? And then you tell Please. me what your opinion is. Yeah. I feel like COVID changed some things. It used to be a tattoo. When I was growing up, my youth pastor at least once a year would show a movie called The Thief in the Night. Come on. And, man, I would get saved every... Oh, yeah. Uh, often, that often. But that one, I would always... And he would show it. He would show it at a lock-in. You can't get out. <laughs> Mom! And, and I remember the song. I, I, I know it. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. And I remember as a little 13-year-old walking through my house and seeing clothes on the floor in the laundry room, <laughs> calling out to my mom, who was just upstairs but didn't answer because she was just, mom just had, it, had had it with me that day, right, mom? She's in the house. And I thought I'd been left behind. But I remember they would present tattoos as the mark in those days. And then, before COVID, it was a microchip and then a little tablet looking, almost like a tic-tac that could fit within your thumb. And even some European nations were made, getting their employees to do it. And then COVID happened, and they came out with this vaccine called an mRNA. And I need to be clear here. I'm not saying that is the mark. But I'm saying technology changed during that moment, that movement. They were able to put in an ingredient in this vaccine called Luciferian. Yes. And it has a light attribute that when put under black light, it illuminates. And I had a little bit, little bit of fun with it here at Greater Life as we talked about it years ago in 2020. And I said, hey, have y'all noticed the street lights are now black lights? They're not the normal street lights. Have y'all so noticed that? I was like, so they can see you and see if you've been. And, and that's not the case, but I was scared. Anyway, I had to back off from that. People were like, what? Really? No. So don't go under them. No, I'm just, I digress. 
the mark became, for, for someone to be marked, became biological and invisible to the naked eye during the development of the mRNA va vaccine. And not only that, but their last phase, which I don't know if they got there yet, that they were developing two, two things. Number one, they were developing the technology to be able to use drones to implement. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, somewhere I read in Revelation that there were these insects that would sting with the tail of a scorpion. And anyway, that's, that's a foreshadowing. But this other technology was beginning to be developed that it could be vaporized and just breathe in, and now you've received that mark. And so I'm convinced that the mark of the beast is much more sinister than it was at one point in time. But I also look at Scripture, Alan, and this is why I want to give get your opinion on it, that I believe people won't be fooled into, t they're fooled to delete, believe the deception in the Antichrist, but not fooled. They know right. they're, they know they're, pledging loyalty to the Antichrist as opposed to not refusing. So I don't think people that come to faith during the tribulation will be, oh, no, I didn't know. I don't think, I don't think that's possible. No, you can't accidentally get the mark of the beast. Right. Which, whew. Yes. I remember when barcodes were the mark of the beast. Y'all remember yeah. that? When WWW, that was the mark of the beast. That's yes. 666. No, and so people were concerned, and when the chips came out, people were concerned about their their older loved ones who were going into a nursing home or whatever. I don't want them to get that because that might be the mark of the beast. You can't accidentally get the mark of the beast. Right. And actually, the Bible doesn't say anything about it being technologically advanced, and, and certainly probably will be. What it does tell us is it is a reward for worship. Mm. That's what the mark of the beast is. It is a, so you can't accidentally worship someone. Mm. So it is, it is in exchange. Can I read what it says sure. here, actually? And the Bible says that he comes down and deceives them that dwell on the earth. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. Deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that it as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might be able to buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the number of the beast or the number of the name. Herein is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. We have become so accustomed to technological advances, we don't understand the profundity of that passage of Scripture, that for millennia they have wondered, what in the world does that mean? Right. But we have become so accustomed to the paranormal. You mm. understand what the word paranormal means? It simply means outside of the ordinary. Right. That's all it means. Par paramedic is someone who comes alongside to help you who isn't normally there. Right. That's a, par a parachute is something that's there alongside you to help you that's not normally there. You pull on it when you need it. Yeah. Paranormal means that something comes along that's not normal. This right here is not normal. Right. This device, can you imagine 100 years ago showing someone a video? Can you imagine that? Or uh, 200 years ago. So these things will be considered magic, where you can just push a button on your remote control on your TV and the TV comes on. That's magic. Cell phones, all this stuff. Paranormal. We become so accustomed to it, we don't realize how profound this is. The Bible says that the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to create this image, this automaton, and they're going to give it power to speak. Right. And that in the midst of this, we don't know if this image has any relation to this. It seems like it probably does. That they will be able to control who buys and sells across the entire planet. How is that even possible? Right. That's never been possible until your lifetime. Never been possible. Right now, because of artificial intelligence, because of the technology we have, a small group of people in a small room in one place can control the economy of the whole wide world. Yes. They can track every single person should a mark like this be implemented. And I believe that's done through artificial intelligence. But before we understood what artificial intelligence was, Alan Turing came out talking about machines that could actually think and learn. Before we knew any of that, 
How would you describe this? How would you understand this? They had to speculate and over-spiritualize and allegorize. But when it comes to Bible prophecy, when God says the apples is ripe, right. go get the bucket. Yeah. You don't have to wonder about it, question <laughs> it. Could it be this? Could, it's it probably exactly the way it says right. and exactly as it sounds, as outlandish as it seems. And so what this is, it is simply a reward for worship. So don't feel like you can accidentally get it. You're not going to get all this technology people are scared to implement. It. Some of that I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think artificial intelligence. Well, the enemy is going to use artificial intelligence. Well, it's also going to use guns. Right. Are you Are you going to stop? Are you going to get rid of yours? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> right. And so we need to use whatever we can, whatever tool we have, to advance the kingdom of God as long as we possibly can. You know, I think you, know, you mentioned technology and the convenience of it all. I resisted the newer iPhones, so I had the button. I had the home well, button. Well, that is the Antichrist. Uh, yeah, iPhone? I, 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 I'm, it, there, I had a missionary, yeah. You got an Android over here. Android people in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Praying for all of y'all. Um, and I resisted, the, I resisted because I wanted the button. I wanted the click. Yeah, and then I yeah. went to the, the other one, the face, and I'm like, okay, well, they got my thumbprint, so they know who I am, so I might as well give them my face, too. And uh, so I got to the point, like, you know, I'd probably be the first one to sign up for the technology and the, and the convenience of it all. And uh, as you were talking about the mark, I'm considering the other things that we have stretched for over the years. As we look at things that have happened, like, oh, because they have that, then this must right. happen. Uh, some years ago, they had um, an artist that was traveling, and he had this 30-foot statue that was a to a an automatron that, that could speak, uh, that people would buy tickets, and then they, you could speak into it in a microphone, and it would animate and talk. And it was called The Giant, and it was traveling all over Europe. And I remember showing that to the guys here when we were walking through it. But we were saying, oh, wow, look, that's what it, it might look like. That I don't know, but I'm convinced, too, that with AI and how really good it looks, yeah. one of the things that, that we've talked about is – they can tell you that this country went to war with that country, and if they've got the control on the true path of information, you won't know any different. we won't know any different. Yeah. We'll just know, okay, we must be up in arms. We need to go to World War III. We need to bomb. We need to do this because it, it looks so real. And uh, so I think, like you think, that technology certainly, as we're watching the world stage, that we, I mean, we are closer today than we were yesterday. And nothing needs to happen for Jesus to return. But man, it just makes sense that we are in the harvest, that the reap, the reaping of the harvest is coming soon. It's almost as if we're, we're I don't know what the word is, we've been oversaturated. Where every technology that comes out, this is it, this is it, this is it. Right. And, and we just, and now we're just numb to it. We're like, okay, yeah, they've been saying that for 50 years, that this is the mark of the beast. But you got to understand, this is the first generation where it's even possible. Right. And so everything we see is the first time we've seen something that's capable of meaning that. And so that's why everyone keeps jumping on this train, this train, this train, this train. And, and the reality is that we don't know what it's going to be. But we're the first generation to say, this can happen. This could be it. This could be it. This could be it. So don't get, don't get um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, just bored or numb to it all. Because it's always, people are sensationalizing it or feel like they're sens sensationalizing here, there, and, right. and everywhere. Just get excited about everything because it's just a reminder. All these things are just reminders that Jesus' return is soon. It Amen. is imminent. It's coming uh, at a time when, when we think not, and we have to be ready for it. How do you feel... Um You've mentioned a few things that you were watching here. Is that even two weeks ago, the guy came out with a with a book uh, coming up soon. Uh, what are a couple of things more that we should keep a watch on that you've seen over the past few weeks? Well, one of the things that uh, I recently did an interview with Todd Coconado, and we have we have something called Encounter News, where we're we have a reporter. Her name is Matea who is an investigative journalist who's worked for the UN, who works for us now full time. And she's, her, her sole job is to investigate and write articles every day that believers should know about. And she puts out about three or four articles every single day that she puts out on Encounter News. And we did some research into the World Economic Forum and what they were, have been meeting about. And they had some closed door meetings that were not recorded where they were specifically addressing the spirit-filled church in the world. 
And there were several things that they were talking about. They were talking about people who preach on tithing and prosperity and those who believe in speaking in other tongues. Mm. He said, these are the ones that are the biggest danger to us, and here's how we need to spread propaganda, essentially, in order to stop people from buying into these subjects. Wow. So the Antichrist agenda, this, this gives me a lot, of, a lot of information, I think, into the, what the enemy is scared most of. He's scared of God's people prospering, and he's scared of them activating the power and presence of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Yes. And so what you need to be watching for, we talked about Project Mockingbird, yeah. where the United States government literally has bought and paid for agents in media. This has been proven. We know this is true. Bought and paid for agents in the media who say whatever the government tells them to say. How many of you believe that's true? That's true. Do you think that, and there are actors in Hollywood who are plants. They are government plants, government agents in Hollywood. In the same way, there are plants in the church who are there, placed there specifically to spread a certain kind of mm -hmm. message, a certain kind of propaganda, and then there are those useful innocents, or some will say useful idiots, useful innocents, who buy into those lies, and they begin to push that narrative as well. So what you need to be watching for are doctrines that are ridiculed, that are taken advantage of, and that are made fun of. And you need to watch specifically those that are attacking prosperity and those that are attacking the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Now, what I mean by attacking that is, there, that means there will be those who will directly attack it and scoff at the idea of you believing in divine prosperity, you believing in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But then there are those who attack it, who claim to be proponents of it, but abuse it. How many of you know that someone abusing a message is as much a turnoff of people right. receiving it as anything else? That's good, too. I mean, yeah. you, could place an, you could do an argument against, you know, the Holy Ghost, but when you have a minister who is abusing the gifts of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. that turns people off even more, and they run to cessationist churches and reformed churches and Calvinist, right. well, I don't know how detailed. <laughs> We're we, Armenian. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> how detailed good. we want to get. We have, we have a coffee company, and uh, we've, we've got two blends right now. We have the Wigglesworth blend. And we have Azusa Street Mornings, which I, they're amazing. But we're going to start a third one called the Calvin Blend. Uh, it's a decaf because <laughs> it, it, it has a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So that's, that's, I think that's what we need to watch oh, out for. Well. You spoke of the division and the, <laughs> and the hatred in the church today. Pay attention to those. Yeah. Mark those who cause divisions among you. Amen. That's good. I believe that... Um, I love, I love a moving of the Holy Spirit, and then and something that some time ago they were talking about praying in tongues and the importance of that in their personal life as a believer, as well. And and I was reminded in that that it is a gift that we have to exhort ourselves, but also I mean I don't know about you, but there's a lot of times I don't know how to pray, mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of times I do know how to pray, but I'm praying my agenda, and that's also not a, effective. And so one of the beautiful things about the gift of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues is not only are you praying the perfect will of God, but the devil is frustrated because yeah. he doesn't know how to fight you. Yeah. He doesn't know what you're praying for, so he can't go and attack what you're trying to go after in the spirit and pray towards. And so when the devil doesn't understand why he's losing, that's a good place to be. Yeah. Amen? Because uh, he will fight you at every front that he's aware of. But when I pray in the Spirit, he doesn't know where he's coming or going, and we begin to win. Amen? Come on. Now, when you, when you see those attacks, here's what I recommend. Here's what I do, because you'll see a ministry fall, or you'll see a minister come out against this, that, or the other. That's a sign to me that I need to dig into that subject matter right now, that the Spirit of God is doing something right now in that area, and that's when we need to press into it. Yes. So if, if something comes out and some preacher is exposed and then all the church is now dogging prosperity, which is kind of one of the favorite whipping boys of the church right now and anyone who believes in it, whenever that happens, I just dig into the work because I know, okay, there's an attack against this. That means right now I need to dig into this right. and dive into it and get extreme about this for a season uh, because the Spirit of the Lord is apparently doing something. And if I can say this as well, a third thing to look for is open doors for evangelism specifically looking for open doors for event. Can I st share these stats? Sure. Very quickly. This, this is something I just discovered from the Pew Research Center, not a Christian, not a Christian company. Not for, like Church Pew. Not, no, not yeah. like Barna. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, this is Pew Research Center. 55% uh, of Americans believe that Jesus will return someday. 
They're excited about it. <laughs> How many of you believe Jesus is going to return Amen. someday? <laughs> but he, these stats are going to get crazy, so hang with me here for a second. 29% of non-Christian religions believe we're living in the last days. Let's go even deeper. 23% of non-religious adults believe we're living in the last days. 14% of agnostics believe we're in the last days. And 9% of atheists believe we're in the last days. Wow. So think about this. One, another stat said 42% of Americans believe Jesus could return in their lifetime. Well, what percent of Americans do you believe are born again? It's mm. not 42%. Mm. So that means there's a large percentage of people in this country right now who they see it. Atheists, by the way, the, how, how is it possible that 9% of atheists believe they're living in the last days? Because there's no such thing as an atheist. Right. It's a religion. They all know deep down inside that God is real. Yeah. And even an atheist, an agnostic, people of varied beliefs or non-beliefs, they're looking at what's happening in the nation right now, and they're saying, what is going on? They're looking at what's happening around the world, and they're saying, this is not normal. This is unusual. This is dark. They all sense something dark is looming on the horizon. So that means that there's a large percentage of people who believe they're living in the last days and who know they're not ready for Jesus' return. So all you have to do is just tap that vein. Not even very hard. You don't have to be dogmatic. Just tap that vein. And every, that's the reason this book has been such a blessing, Summoning the Demon, AI, Aliens, and Antichrist, because so many unbelievers have gotten this book. And so many believers have gotten it for their unbelieving friends who just love the subject of aliens or they love the subject of, of end time stuff. They're fascinated with it. And all you have to do is join in with them in that fascination. And now the door is open for the gospel to be preached. Hallelujah. There's a hunger in people for the supernatural. Yes. Uh, paranormal, as you were saying. Uh, that sounds like a ghost story on 2020, but but there is a hunger in people that they 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 know something else is there. Tell them holy ghost story. That's right. They're looking for something. But they don't know where to find it. And uh, that evangelism opportunity, that's, that's a huge opening for us as a church. I want to end with this. And this is, well, my goal is to throw something out there that they walk away wanting and studying. Daniel chapter 7, the four beasts. We'll have to get Evan up here for Daniel. Why is he? He's, no, he's, the, he's the expert in the book. Oh. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel chapter 7. Now, I'm, I'm going to throw my... my opinion in here aren't you thankful that we can have opinions uh, my opinion is that the bible says what it means but also um there are things that unite us and then there are things that we can just have fun being all yes. kinds of opinions and this is one of those i think uh the first beast how how are you an expert on the beast of daniel 7 what, a 20 year how many 13 of you, years old uh, yeah a 20 year old who's an expert in the book of daniel that's Come amazing on. i'm We're sitting here thinking that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome he has studied it extensively honestly i go to him and ask him questions about the book of well daniel. he probably would be able to give us insight the 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 one thing i want to share with you that just kind of makes sense to me so first we have some of the arguments about the united states is the first beast the first beast was like a lion we look at Great Britain as uh, the lion being their animal uh, with eagle's wings. Again, the United States coming out of Great Britain. As I watched, the wings were pulled off. Daniel 7, verse 4. I'm reading NLT. I know you've got the KJV over there, so you're going to be lost. We'll pray for you. you got that Antichrist. As I <laughs> Just kidding. Me Just and my joke. iPhone. <laughs> as it's a slippery I, slope. As I, as I watched, the wings, <laughs> its wings were pulled off, and I was left standing, and it was left standing with its two hind feet on the ground, like a human being, and it was given a human mind. And, and you see there the progression, or at least I see the progression of Great Britain, uh, a great and mighty nation, and these beasts represent kingdoms and nations, coming into now America, coming out of it, and then the human mind being the single superpower in the world today, but also being probably, while it's the greatest evangelical nation, it's the greatest humanist nation. W would you agree? Yeah. And uh, so we find ourselves with we are our own gods, uh, but then we also have an incredible amount of believers that certainly believe. And Great Britain uh, is also symbolized often as a lion. Yeah, as a lion. Yeah. So the Great Britain being the lion, now the eagle's wings being the United States that comes out of mm -hmm. Great Britain. And then we find the second beast, the bear. And so when I look at 
the United States being represented there, I simply see it moving into this form of humanism, but losing its power. The bear being uh, the second beast, which is who? Russia, right? Uh, that is their animal. It is rearing up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and I heard a voice saying, get up and devour, and Russia has a reputation for devouring uh, over the years. Um, and Ukraine's a whole nother interesting thing, which that's all kind of wonky. We don't have time to get into yeah. it. Um, the, the third beast appeared, and it looked like a leopard. It had four bird's wings on its back, and it had four heads. Great authority was given to this beast. Uh, then in the vision, it goes on and talks about a dragon with um, ten horns, uh, a beast that is described as a dragon. I want to talk about the leopard. You ready? Let's go. We need to get carried. I think the leopard too. is Germany. Okay. So we have the Third Reich. We are now in the fourth. It has these four wings, right? Following me so far? Yeah. And uh, we find that the leopard is the animal of Germany. And we find the Antichrist, which is prophesied to have a head wound and mortal, uh, a mortal head wound to die and to look like he resurrected. But we find Germany as a nation that was supposed to be killed or at least wounded where it would never rise again. And we find it, and if you don't know, now you know, it is an incredibly powerful nation. We don't recognize the power that is in Germany and the wealth uh, and even the power on the world stage that in the shadows, they have a lot of say. Um, but I could see, because we, we want to know where the Antichrist comes from too, uh, there's a belief that he's Jewish. There's a belief that he's American. Muslim. There's a belief that he's Muslim. There's yeah. a belief that he's European. And the European one comes from probably the movies more than anything. Or that he's Nephilim. Or he's Nephilim, Well, which he could be any of these nationalities right. That's right. because the Nephilim are still among us. But it looks different. They're not among us. <laughs> they might be. Look at your neighbor. But it certainly, it certainly looks different today. Um, did, did you know, I'm going to end with this, because this is crazy town, so I feel like it's a great place to end. This is awesome, right? This is great. Did you know Nancy Pelosi admitted that there were <laughs> reptilian people among no, us No, I did the not see day? this. When did this happen? It just happened like a week ago. She slipped up and said it, and she said it like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> what do they say in every joke? There's some truth. Yeah. Anyway. I needed to throw at least one name out there to be specific. But let's uh, <laughs> let's thank Alan for his time and his investment in us, brother. Thank you so much oh, for being here. I have a free book to give away to somebody <laughs> up here if somebody wants it. No, it's seriously, let's let's pray together for uh, for Alan, his family, this ministry. What a gift you've been given, and may it be too small very quickly. God, may you continue to move in encounter. Charlotte, the, much like their leader, Pastor Allen, encountered you so many years ago in a very special way. May people continue to be changed from the inside out by the power of your spirit. May you continue to give gifts, gifts that they cannot even contain like you've done with this property. Help them as they endeavor to remodel and bring this new house to a place of excellence, Lord, so that more and more people will come to faith. May his leadership and the future leadership that gathers around him, may they be strong, may they be loyal, and may they be devoted to the vision and the mission of that church and that ministry. May you touch, oh God, the reach online that goes way beyond the, the Sundays and local ministry and that people would continue to find the gospel in these different avenues. Lord, for, for Pakistan, that has many works that have been planted. May you have your blessing upon those places. And Lord, may you continue to rise up those churches. Lord, may your blessing be upon those that are treating, tre preaching and teaching a true gospel, a pure gospel, an anointed gospel, a spirit-filled gospel, a fire-breathing and anointed gospel that sees signs and wonders and miracles in our day. And God, may you protect even this house. Have your hand upon us. Help us to do the best we can with what's in front of us. And everyone in this room tonight, may we endeavor to do the next right thing. And no matter what happens in the world around us, 
May we look up, for your return draws near. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you guys for being here tonight. God bless you.